Hi there, this is JTech welcoming you to a brand new series of educational music production videos showing you my start to finish process for producing a progressive house track, the likes of which I would use in one of my podcasts or DJ sets. <clears throat> Firstly, I want to say thank you to everybody who tuned into the 10 quick tips videos that I posted on Sonic Academy. Uh, the feedback was really great, uh, so I hope that they were of some use to you. So this series is going to be split into... Uh, about 15 videos and um, I've, I've done my best to sort of break down my production process as much as possible to give you guys an idea of how it all works. Um, today we're going to be looking at crafting an initial groove. I already took the liberty of putting a, a couple of basic elements together now. Um, that sort of saves us a bit of time in terms of browsing kicks and, and instruments and stuff like that. I'm going to try and keep that kind of thing to a minimum. Uh, and keep the content as uh, useful and concise as possible. So um, what we have here, I'm just going to play it for you quickly so you can have a bit of a listen to this, to this uh, loop that I have going on here. So basically what I've done here, I've used uh, the Kick2 plugin. Uh, I started with a, I think one of the Psytrance Kick presets and um, I just threw that in there. And basically the way that I generally craft uh, an initial groove is to have three things happening at the same time. So if people say, do you start a track with a kick? I usually say, if it's a progressive house track anyway, I will start with kick, snare and a basic bass. And that's because the groove is the most important thing for sure, in a progressive house track. It's the basis upon which everything else is built. All of the musical message, everything like that can come later with a progressive track. But the most important thing is that it's going to work in a club. And uh, so I started with a, a default preset for the kick and for the snare in here and this basic bass. So uh, I'll give you just a listen to these. This basic bass is uh, the Anasynth. It's a very, very simple preset that I just tweaked a little bit. Um, I tweaked some of the, uh, the parameters in here just to make it sound a bit more uh, full. And then this is a support bass, which is usually what I would put in after a basic bass. And this is uh, what from the bass electro, Dalax it's called. And um, I added a couple of things to this. I added a phaser to it. Uh, the phaser is probably a little bit hardcore at the moment. I might turn it down a little bit. So that basically uh, forms, and, and yeah, and a, a little FX here, pretty simple, delayed, side-chained. Um, from the Ultimate FX bundle. And uh, so what I usually do with these parts together is I, sit, I sort of sit with them for a while and make sure that everything really sits right. I, I made sure when putting these together that they sounded good on speakers and in headphones. And um, say with, with the kick, for example, what I would generally do is is tweak some of these parameters. Just listening to it now, I could hear that this click probably needs to come down a little bit on this on this kick drum. That's just that. Great thing about kick two is you can just drag any of these parameters around and change the shape of the kick. So I'll give you a, a quick example of that. I won't mess with it too much because I've already tweaked it to how I like it. So somewhere around there is fine. From this point, I'm going to add a percussion layer using the Ableton drum rack. So I'll throw that in here. I'm using these ultimate drums here. I will start with toms is probably a good point. I'll just drag all of these in. Perk, I'll call that. Got a nice little blue color. I, I copied that clip purely just for the to keep the color. By the way, there's no there's no real benefit in doing that. Um, and start really simple with this kind of thing. I'll do it over here so I'm not my judgment isn't clouded by that uh, FX hit. And 
and I can just switch back and forth. This is a very logic pro style way of doing things, um, basically just to sort of choose the hit that fits the best. In this particular case, I actually want to use a couple of these. So what I'll do is I'll mess with the velocities or basically how hard the, the note is being hit. And I'll, I'll combine a few of these together because this one had some cool bass in it as well, which is kind of nice. Nitpicking here, but that Tom 7 could uh, be up to semitones to be in key with the rest of the track. I like that. From here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of processing. Something I, I wanna point out with the processing here is that I'm gonna do as little mixing with EQ and compression as I can throughout the entire track. Um, because if you can have a pretty much finished track that has barely any EQ and compression in it, it puts you in a great uh, place to then go and mix things, makes things a lot easier because you've already mixed things with your volume and your panning and, and, and other kinds of processing. So uh, for now, I'm just going to put maybe a bit of reverb on this. Um, I'll do things the traditional way today and actually make a reverb bus just for the hell of it. I'm soloing the reverb signal here. Seeing as I'm going to be sending a lot of things to this reverb, I'll probably just like increase the quality of it to high. Actually changes the sound of this reverb plugin like a lot. I'm not going to worry too much about the minutia of the rest of the, of the settings here for now, because um, I think the track should take shape more before I worry about that. So for now, I've just got some reverb there. Happy with that. So something else uh, along those lines, what I would usually do at this point is something a little bit glitchy, maybe um, something from this dubstep kit might work well. Or actually if we have some effects in here, that might be a better, better kind of thing. So yeah, this kind of thing is what we're looking for. Excuse me, that's quite loud, sorry. <clears throat> so here we go. Once again, when I'm looking for a sound like this that's going to just hit once, I just find a cool folder of stuff, I throw it all into the drum rack, and we see what happens. It's pretty simple. I'm sure you guys have done this a lot as well, so, you know, um, I won't dwell on it for too long. Well, let's see what cool noises we can make. kind of cool. I might just take the first little bit of that. Turn it down a little bit and keep moving. That's cool. Look at that, there's like a little sound there that's uh, pretty much already in time with what I'm doing and uh, adds a cool little rhythmic element there. Happy with that. Let's call that glitch. Just uh, try and keep everything nicely color coded for this project. Uh, something I'm going to do, which uh, you certainly don't have to. This is actually something I, something I saw Elan Bluestone actually do actually, which is basically um, for all of your ducking, 
just put it all in a group and just have like a duck group. And basically that just means you have everything going to one side chain. I, d I generally don't use Ableton groups for grouping things into their like particular categories because basically I end up just having to undo all of that later if I'm stemming something out, for example. Um, I always try and just keep things like as, as simple as possible when it comes to the arrangement. So, and this duck bus is no exception. It's like, it's just going to be for ducking and, you know, I might even change that later. But for now, it's just so that everything that ducks just goes in there. Hat, you can duck or not duck. It really depends on what kind of hats you're using and what you're using it for. In this particular case, I'll throw it in the duck bus just to see what happens. Let's stick with progressive because that's my jam. Hats. Once again, let's just chuck them all in here and see what happens. We're not worrying too much about the arrangement of things for now. I think this is a stage where people often are like, where is this going? What, what is it? Um, and I would sort of argue this stage is just, it's just the uh, incubation stage. You're, just, you're literally just generating sounds that are, are gonna figure out where they belong later. That's pretty tight. Anything else that I want to add to that? Let's give it a try. Don't be afraid to, to layer things up. Uh, sometimes adjusting where the transient of the sound hits can, uh, can help fit it into the mix a bit better. So that's something else to keep in mind as well. I actually quite like that. Um, I'm gonna now duplicate this entire drum rack so that it's all basically the same rack. Uh, I'm gonna make this a 16th hat as well. I'm just gonna work on the basis that generally with a track like this, they're not gonna come in around the same time. So start to just double this out a little bit. I'll bring these 16th hats in a little bit later. Tiny little bit of development there. Something I did with these bass lines, which I'm gonna do now with this hat, is do an almost kind of side chain effect with the velocity of the notes. Uh, you'll see that I actually don't have these bases in the in this side chain. That's just something I'm doing for the hell of it with this particular track. But there is still some ducking going on uh, with these velocities. So it sort of starts like very quiet, then loud, and then medium. And that's just a way to sort of have that side chain effect as if it's still reading the kick. It's not particularly noticeable with that one, but with this support base, it's a bit more noticeable. As opposed to... So, subtle sidechain effect there. Gonna do the same thing with the hats here. So, one quiet, one loud, one medium. redlining a little bit on the mixer. I'm gonna turn everything down just a tad. In fact, you know what I'll do is, <clears throat> something else I would do at this stage while I'm crafting the initial groove is put like plus eight on the master. Or in fact, maybe actually a plus eight limiter is better because it'll stop it from peeking out and turn everything here everything right down now so that we end up with lots of headroom. Cool, so that limiter at the moment is not limiting anything, it's just uh, turning up the overall mix so that we can still hear what we're doing but all of the individual channels are still quite quiet. I actually quite like those uh, 16th hats as well, but like I should just have a quick 
scout around and see if there's anything better in there. But that 22, that hat 22 is sounding pretty good. That's also kind of cool. Maybe if I uh, combine them. Let's be all tricky now and do some panning on those uh, 16th hats. Uh, it's in controls, isn't it? Somewhere in here, there we go. Okay. Let's do uh, halfway as far as it can go to the left and same to the right, same to the right. Um, here we go. When you pan things, sometimes you then need to adjust their volume just to suit the new space that they have in the mix. So that, that left hat is obviously coming out a lot, a lot louder than the right one at the moment. And you can see that here on the meters too. I'm in headphones at the moment and uh, that left hat was seeming very noticeably too too far out of the left hand side so that's why I've got them balanced like that so that there is and that, and that is the whole point of balance with panning is is to create a balance between like the left and the right side with stuff like this I'm going to add one more bass layer here to just help bolster that bass line groove as well. For this, I might use actually something like Ace. It's an Ace synth, you should check it out. Ha ha ha. Here we go. And this I find to be good for a uh, kind of simple, dark, slightly analog sounding bass sounds. Ace stands for any cable anywhere and you can draw all kinds of ridiculous cables throughout the whole synth, if that's your thing. I'm calling this support bass too, although it's actually really kind of carrying the whole track now, this bass line, so. Sneaky little edit there. We'll put something in that in that hole later. Once again, have no real uh, EQ or compression or anything like that. Once again, it's, it's about f finding these sounds that are gonna fit together quite organically so that you don't have to do any kind of crazy surgical stuff to make them fit together later on. So um, that's basically, that's the foundation for my initial groove. That is the point, that is my jumping off point from which I can then create the rest of the track. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to create uh, a general kind of riff that will carry the whole track into its musical elements in the breakdown. Um, it's basically a riff that is built upon the top of this groove. And once we have created that riff, it'll also uh, help us work out what the melodic elements are going to be. So stay tuned for that in the next video. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.